This is Christopher Mullen from FX Empire, and I want to show you some really exciting price action in the SP500 on the short term. Wait to see how things are unfolding and what these last few bars are pointing to, and we're starting to see that happen today. Also, JP Morgan came out with better than expected earnings, but overall, their biggest gain is from their trading. Overall, their earnings are not all that good in terms of what it looks like going forward. If volatility stays up, they're going to make lots of money, but more or less, uh, loans are down, everything else is down, and the financial sector and the banking sector are actually in full-blown bear markets. going to show you that in just a minute, but let's start off with the SP500. Here's the daily chart of the SP500. We've had the pullback through August, September. We finally put in a bottoming formation, and we finally started to break and pop to the upside. If we take a quick look at our trend analysis, more or less, you can see where the market pulled back. We lost momentum, went into negative territory, more or less a downtrend. And over the last week and a half, it's firmed up. We finally had a breakout. And yesterday we saw a short covering squeeze. We had the break and then everyone seemed to cover their shorts. And when we see short covering and everyone rushing in at the same time, usually the market is overdone and we're gonna see some type of pause and pullback. That's what we're starting to see today. We'll see if it's a one day blip down and, and we go back up to test these highs. This high will bring us up to around a 3.91% move based on this previous bar when we had the signal here to get long. Uh, now, if we go back to the SP500, this is the price action that is uh, kind of important to look at. Let me just switch this from the SP500 to the SPY, regular trading hours only. Now, here's the thing. Gaps on the SP500 almost always get filled. And the problem here is we've had this breakout, but we've had one gap, two gap, a much bigger gap yesterday and a very strong push more or less up into resistance where big sellers stepped in last time in crushed price. So the fact that the market just keeps gapping, it's running away here and we saw momentum uh, in terms of everyone piling in on the long side yesterday, that's not a good sign. Typically, we need a breather. And unfortunately, there are three gaps that need to come down to get filled. So we could be in for a little bit of some volatility. But overall, we're going to have potentially a very nice uh, pennant or flag formation here. That points to, uh, you could argue, could be a cup and handle formation as well. Points to much higher prices come the end of this month. Take a quick look here. This is the election year seasonality wise. The key takeaway is we are somewhere right about here. Markets just had a pop. We could easily see a pullback, maybe a push up to test those highs again. Uh, more or less, we're coming into a little bit more weakness at the near the end of the month or next week is what that is. And then it's showing we should have a really strong push into the election, followed by the Santa or the holiday rally, which is typical price action. Pink is typical price action, and uh, blue is for what happens during a uh, election year. So we're going to have some volatility, but overall, this month should be the bottom. I think we've already seen the bottom, and uh, any pause or pullback here is going to be very bullish price action going forward. All right, let's jump over to JP Morgan real quick. Take a look at this. Uh, JP Morgan. Uh, they had all kinds of different things come out. They've got very, they actually put only 600 million away in credit reserves uh, this quarter, uh, 300 million less than what they did last year when there weren't really any issues last year. So they're not stockpiling very much money. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit. Here is the January, February highs, and you can see JP Morgan way off those highs. You look at some other sectors like XLK, which is technology heavy. We are pushing to new highs. You look at the solar sector, the best sector of the year, completely crushing these lows. If we were to go all the way back to the beginning, to the highs we had just a couple of days ago, 265% move since the March lows alone. I wrote an article about it right over here, uh, showing how everyone was piling in um, into this. Here are those gaps, a gap and go, gap and go, gap and go, gap and go. And this typically leads to a very sharp market correction, just like the last time we saw this, these gap and goes, big volatility, and then the market corrects. And that's what we're just starting to see now in the SP 500. And both of these times right here is where everyone piled in with 
Robinhood trading accounts. You look back and look at TAN under there, you'll see everyone in there is piling in buying TAN. They all piled in and bought TAN here. When the masses buy them, that's not a good sign. It usually means some type of correction, and those people are going to uh, have some, uh, some losses in the near term. So lots of volatility in this market. Now let's go back to the XLF. Look at the financial sector. And it is way off the highs. I'm going to go to the weekly chart so you can actually get a real picture of where we are. Let's go back. Let's go back all the way to 2007 market top. We are, uh, if I can get that moving average to load further back, more or less, we are back under the 200 week, the four year kind of moving average. Very significant uh, over here. And you look, you can see how it, when we break through, we're in a bull market. More or less, when we break below it, we are in a bear market. And we broke down through there, and we are clearly far from these highs. The financial sector makes sense that financials are under pressure. We are in a financial crisis. Now, look at the KRE, which are the, the banking stocks. Sure, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, good earnings, but that's because they're killer traders. Their trading division makes up a huge portion of their gains and really covers and masks the rest of what's going on, not to mention the share buybacks they do that just uh, inflate their stock prices. But you can see here the, the, the banking sector, we are clearly under the four-year moving average. It broke down, broke a significant low, uh, struggled to get back up early this year or late last year it was, and now we've completely collapsed again more or less full out bear markets for the financial sector. And again, we are in a financial crisis and these are kind of the leaders to the downside. Uh, very skewed. You look at the tech, way new highs, very different than this. But this is kind of a really interesting view. You need to know that some sectors are in full blown bear markets. And if the financial sector is this far gone, that is not a good sign long term for the economy. It means they're expecting Big shareholders have moved out of these plays expecting massive defaults in mortgages, credit cards, you name it, all these things. There's going to be all kinds of financial issues. So uh, keep your eyes peeled on these markets, and uh, hopefully you got some type of insight uh, or some trading tip out of this video. Anyways, that's it. Chris Vermeulen from thetechnicaltraders.com. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.